Once there was a drought. No rain, no plants, no food for the animals. The paca, the peccary, the deer, the spotted skunk, the rabbit, they were all so thin you could count their ribs. Their fur was dry and falling out. They were tired and grumpy all the time. The only animal who did not seem to be affected was fox. He was nice and plump, his hair was soft and shiny, and he was full of smell burp. Other animals him fox. You have food somewhere that you're plump, your hair is nice and shiny, and you're full of smelly burps? But Fox would not answer them at all. So they said amongst themselves, he must have food somewhere. Let's follow him and see if we can figure out where it is. And so they followed Fox at a distance, and they saw that he seemed to disappear into a hillside, a, a rock-faced hill with boulders at the bottom. And Fox just seemed to melt into those boulders. And they said, there must be a cave inside that hill. He probably has food in there. How can we find out? I'll go. It was Flea. Good, they said. Flea, you go hop on Fox, and, and you can see what's in the cave. And so Flea hopped, and he 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 hopped. And finally, he found Fox and hopped onto him. But he was so tired from all that hopping, and Fox's fur was so soft and warm that Flea just fell asleep. He slept all afternoon and all night long, and he didn't wake up until Fox came out into the bright morning sunlight. And when that sunlight hit Flea, he woke up and he realized he'd missed his chance. He hopped off and he told the other animals, I'm sorry, I slept. I was too tired from hopping and I did not see what was in the cave. That's OK, said the other animals. Thank you for trying. But now what will we do? I'll go. That was Tick. Now, ticks don't hop. So Tick waited by the side of the path until Fox came along. And then Tick jumped on Fox's leg and crawled up onto his back. He took a nice, long drink of Fox. Oh, it had been a long time since Tick had been on a healthy animal. He drank and he drank and he drank and he drank until Tick was so full. Oh, and Fox was so soft that Tick fell asleep. He slept all afternoon and all through the night, and he didn't wake up until Fox came out of the cave into the bright morning sunlight, and that sunlight woke Tick up and he realized he had missed his chance. And he rolled off and he said to the other animals, I'm sorry, Fox just tasted so good. and I got so full, I fell asleep, and I don't know what was in the cave. That's OK. Tick, thank you for trying. Now what will we do? I'll go. It was Firefly. Good, said the other animals. You go, and, and with your light, you can find out what's in the cave. So Firefly flew over to the rocks, and she crawled around on those boulders until she found an opening, and she went through it. A little way, she found herself flashing her light in a cave. It was a large cave, and the cave was full of corn, white, plump ears of corn piled 10 and 20 deep, uh, deep from the ground to the ceiling. The cave was full of corn, enough corn for all the animals. Firefly was very excited. She flew out to the other animals. The cave is full of corn, enough corn for all of us for a long time. Oh, said the other animals, it is not right for Fox to keep all that corn to himself. We are starving. How can we get to that corn? Ooh, they thought and thought how to break open that cave. Finally, they called the strongest creatures they could think of, and that was lightning. 
they called three young, strong lightning bolts, and they explained what they needed them to do to break the rock face of that cave. That should be easy, said the first young, strapping thunderbolt, and he gathered his strength, and then he threw it at the rock face of the hill. Nothing happened. Let me try, said the second lightning bolt, and he sharpened the jagged edges of his bolt, and then he knifed it right into that rock face. Nothing happened. Oh, it's my turn, said the third one, and he heated himself hotter than the sun, and then he blasted away at that rock face. Nothing happened. Oh, said the animals, we're so hungry. We need that corn. Oh, what are we going to do? I have an idea. It was Grandfather Lightning. I'm not as strong as I used to be, but I have an idea. I'll need Woodpecker's help. Woodpecker flew up, and, and Grandfather Lightning explained that he wanted her to peck down the side of that rock face until she heard the sound change. And where the sound changed, that's where the cave was, because that's where the rock was hollow. And at that point, the rock should be the narrowest and the easiest to break. So Woodpecker flew over to the rock, and she began to peck down the face of that hill. Peck, peck, peck. Peck, peck, peck. Peck, peck, pock. Pock, pock. Peck, peck, pock. It's here, she called, the sound changed. She waited while Grandfather Lightning aimed his bolt and then she flew away and he struck the rock at precisely the right spot and it cracked and then it opened and the corn poured out thousands of ears of white, good corn and the animals fell upon it and ate and ate and it turned out to be enough corn to last them all for the whole time of that drought. They survived until the rains came and the plants grew and there was food again. And that's the story of how the animals survived the drought. But a few other things happened that day. The corn, which in the cave had been white as corn usually was, the corn was affected by Grandfather Lightning's bolt. Some of it got the light of the lightning and it became yellow and some of it was caught by the fire and it became red and some of it was singed by the smoke and it became black and it became what we here in America call Indian corn. And also, you know, woodpecker, she flew away, but not quite fast enough and Grandfather Lightning just singed the top of her head and turned it red. And since that day, we've had red-headed woodpeckers. And that's the story of corn in the rock.